Now, one night we had somebody put the gas on the car, uh -huh. jam the gas pedal, and watch the car go off into this canal. Okay. Right there at the boat launch. All right, so we might have a, something right here. We got another target about 50 feet out there. Come on, Pearl. All right, so look right here. That is about the length of a vehicle. She is five foot three, 115 pounds. Her name is Pearl Zarkino, and she was just 34 years of age when she went missing February 3rd, 2001. Now she lived only a mile and a half from here in the town of Mons, Louisiana. The entire thing is maybe like four, eight blocks long. It's not large at all. We are at one of only two locations to search today. This location used to be an old boat ramp. And there were times that this entire bay area up here were flooded over the years. So at the time that she went missing, my belief is that the water level is down because no car has been found up here if in fact her vehicle ended up in the water here. We also have a second location just downriver at a dedicated boat ramp that is still there. It has a concrete base. Now, when I step into this, I look at this case one of two ways. The thing with Pearl, she had extreme scarring and burns on her hands and her arms. So then you step into the, well, I used to be so beautiful. I'm in my 30s. I don't know if she's married. I don't know if she's single. I don't know if she has a husband, but just speculating, I'm in my 30s and I can't get anybody because I'm nobody wants to love this. Again, speculation only. Yeah, and the pain from burns can be extreme even after you're healed. I mean, you, you have mobility that tightens up, skin tightens up, fascia, muscle tissue. It just depends on how deep it is. She could have been in a lot of pain as well. The first direction I'm taking this is, is that 1.4 miles up the road where her home was at, closest location, does she decide, I'm just done with life? Or knowing that the second location with the dedicated concrete boat ramp might be a better, faster, straighter shot into the river, is also a possibility. But then we have the second scenario in this is she's 5'3", she's 115 pounds. And unfortunately, it doesn't matter, you know, who you are in life. And I'm not just saying that, you know, small petite women only are taken and taken advantage of, but this could be the case because it's much easier. There's a lot of victims too. I was looking online last night, just the missing people around here. Um, and I mean, there's, there's 52 pages and I think 15 people on each page of just missing people specifically around the uh, New Orleans area. And a lot of them had vehicles that were then found later and you know, were some dumped. I mean, there's, there seems to be a lot of abduction around here. Uh, who knows why? Uh, but a lot, of, a lot of things and people missing. Now the thing is we don't have a visual picture as to what Pearl looked like. So I don't have anything on that one, but I do have that she was last seen driving a 1993 green Ford Crown Vic. Now, if anybody knows what that car is, it's like the classic cop car from the 90s. Just that really kind of balloon bubbly car. That's what we're looking for today. What I want to do though is, although I have this visual of the area in my head, I want to pop the computer open and just give you a few locations to bring you into the story with this boat ramp now being filled in, 
this is not the best place for us to put the boat in, especially with the other one so close. So I think what I want to do on this one, Byron, is let's drive to the other location. Mm -hmm. Let's look at the computer there. We'll then bring the boat up and take it back down. That way we get a nice double scan on this area of these two locations that we have today. Yep, that's so good. That's gonna be our plan. We'll see you in just a few minutes at the other amp. To give you a visual of this, Byron, the entire town of Mons is, that's it. It's like- Small incorporation. Yeah, just really small. With her home, it was over here on the 100 block of uh, Evangeline Road. Mm -hmm. And if you route it, it's only 1.7 miles to the first boat ramp, which is the first ramp is right here where we ended up doing our opening scene and we spent the night right there. Now, when you take a look at some of the way back aerials of this the water level as i was mentioned comes way up and floods that entire area so this was actually up about 200 yards from where we were at this morning mm -hmm. we were down in this area and that's like i said all that floods out with the being able to see the, the weeds and everything in there i'm not real hopeful that that location is going to be it but coming over here to this location you can see how steep this ramp is that we're at right now and I think that this is gonna be our more probable location, especially being that she's just, I mean, you can almost see her house from here. So there's the park ranger, probably gonna to wanna to chat with us today. So let's go uh, put a word in real quick and say hi to him. Sounds good. How goes the patrolling today? Yeah. Same, Same just kind of boring? Sure, yeah. Oh, okay. Before we put in too much uh, effort, have you guys heard of uh, Pearl Zarkini? Went missing in 2001 in a 99... Or Scarkino. Zarkino. In a uh, 1999 um, Crown Vic green. Almost like a park ranger green from back in the day. Yeah. I wasn't out here then. Do you guys know of any vehicles in here currently? Um, no, don't know of any. Another place to go look. Off of US 61 on the other side of the spillway. Okay. Boat right now, one night we had somebody put the gas on the car, uh -huh. jam the gas pedal, and watch the car go off into this canal. Okay. Right there at the boat launch. Okay. And there might be a couple more cars down there. All right. When the sheriff's department showed up, they pulled that car and two others. Okay. Okay. And so that's going to be straight up from her. So her house yeah. is over here. Yeah. So that's going to be straight up the road. Straight okay. We're here. And then this is where he parked last night. We scanned that one as well. But then the ranger said, hey, head up here on the 61 to this canal. They know of a couple cars that have been pulled out of here. So this would have been a pretty straight shot into this canal area right here. So we might have a, something right here. We'll come back to that in a few. And that's like right at the end of the ramp. Yeah, this current's moving. Yeah, and the thing is like, usually the vehicles that we find are all close enough to shore. We got another target about 50 feet out there. Are usually close enough to shore that we're not gonna have the same current like if you were in the middle of the river. And then here's the other potential old boat ramp to take a look at from here on down as well. So we'll run it down, probably just past where that pier is at, that's straight in front of us. And then we'll do a scan further out. Big sign 
do not anchor our dredge, so we might be able to see a big pipeline pop up on sonar too here. The car would not be this far down though. Alright, let's run out a little bit and back up. Alright, so look right here. Just barely. But this is what I want to focus in on. See how that looks like it could be an upside down car frame right there. And it's just a little bit different than the rest of like this all around it for the bank. Now it could be, if you look. This could be some of that concrete right there, right? Yeah, So, but if you look just north of it here, how it's like, like there's nothing, it could just be like stuff has been like maybe an anchor dredge, then like it pulled it and it just repositioned it. But because the size of it kind of goes from the front here to the back here, that is about the length of a vehicle and it's about the width. So I just want to go put double, put eyes on it again. And that was off to our left a little bit. So it's right there on the right. So I'm going to turn back around over it. Is it right about the 36 mark right there? Yep. So, but based upon how long that is now, that it's actually going from the 18 to 54 mark, I'm now led to believe that it's just the way that something's moved a lot of that concrete in there. But we'll come out, we'll go right over it and see if we get any height or anything different to it. So if she would have come off the uh, ramp where the RV is at right now, I would say that this right here would be the maximum distance that she would uh, be at. Now when you come back to the screen, see how we just came, we just dropped down into a hole? Yep. Oh yeah, big hole. Okay. So I would not suspect that the vehicle would pop up over that hole either. Now we have a little something that we just came, came over right there. It's kind of that big concrete pile right there. We'll station our station ourselves right over it right here, yep. and then kind of turn around it and see if we can pick up anything that would be a car identifying. And get nothing as far as a car reading on it. Shape chart, right? Make sure that we're absolutely certain. So where the rope is at, the yellow rope, that big block in front of it is where it's at. So I'm gonna come down just a little bit and then I'm gonna shoot at a 45 across our target and pick it up on side and down at some different angles. So there it is on live. And there it is on the 36 mark there. That's kind of the, the right size and shape if I was to guess but from that angle anyways yeah we we'll get some different angles of it yeah I just don't have any actual vehicle shape to that no it looks like it looks like that piece of concrete you know those pieces of concrete right there with the old oh more like the curb yep yeah, right there, is because there's something sticking up on one side of it. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting like zero vehicle shape from that. Same thing when I throw it on 360. You can see, although it's on 360, it's not giving me an actual vehicle shape on 360 there. Definitely not a Crown Vic, it's too, I mean, it's just a block. It's just kind of like a square block. It's only eight feet wide also. All right, let's go back to side imaging and let's keep scanning then. You gonna give a uh, sonar overview for us? Well, my understanding of it is, uh, you know, the side sonar casts out there. You can see the feet from uh, left to right, right to left there, boats in the center. So we're casting 75 feet left, 75 feet right. You want to scan it about three miles an hour is what uh, I've been told. So you can kind of monitor your miles per hour there on your screen for your clearest image. The live 
cast straight down and it's on auto mode right now so it'll actually zoom in zoom out automatically and what is that based off actually the zooming in and out so i don't have to make the adjustments and but but why does it move in and because out because your depth changes okay for the bottom okay so as it gets shallower then it's going to adjust so that way you have a proper scale to see the bottom versus if i change it to manual and see if i'm like all right i want to be at 60 feet the entire time now we're wasting half the screen there. Yeah, makes sense. So if I just put it back on auto, then it does what it needs to and automatically adjusts for me. So on this screen, what I look for is something that's around, you know, 12 to 15 feet, rectangle square. That's the first indicator to me that we might have a target. The live really gives me a great view on what we're looking at because it's pretty it's pretty accurate i've got a couple shots where you were under there and you can see your fins bubbles body shape everything you can see you're moving so it's it's uh it's a pretty neat machine but it does take an eye and a lot of hours it seems like to really hone in on whether it's an object of interest so you're not out here wasting your time and i think that's just where the experience of the hours and hours and hours of being out here on the water like jared has really really shows in finding people yeah yeah definitely put in the hours like anything you know playing a video game yeah. you know, the more you play it the more you understand the game all right so I didn't see any vehicles there so let's uh, flip up the sonar and run up stream here How close can you get, legally? I think you can go right up to it and touch it if you wanted to. So when they're moving, you don't want to be next to them because that draft will suck you in. Hey, let's go right underneath that part right there between the fin. We could do it. We could fit there. All right, so we're gonna be about 400 yards down right now. So let's go ahead and drop sonar here. Do our first pass closer to shore, then our second pass further out, and clear this area. Yeah, I just don't feel like this is deep enough coming off of the uh, boat ramp of where she could have come off, but now we have more of a dumping ground that's making it harder for her here. So I say let's just go ahead and for good measure though, let's scan out a little bit further to where we get into a little bit deeper water here in the 10 to 11 foot range and then we'll pack it up and head over to that canal yeah clean bottom there's nothing down there these are the bottoms i like scanning when there's zero rocks and any little pebble is going to jump up all right let's pull up anchor or sonar and you can stop those sonars now. Okay, yep, there we go. Okay, so I just want to confirm then. It's a West Guide Levy and Airline Highway. Yeah, right here, there's a boat ramp right here. Okay. Yeah? yeah. I got it on there.
Oh, you got seven feet here, though. Look at that. It's not 15 feet. It's only eight feet. You got a boat or something to the left there. Come on, Pearl. So look at the, the road right here. I think this is what the rangers were talking about. The cars are going by, there's no railing. And they said some someone just gassed it and that's probably where the two vehicles were that they were talking about. Another boat to the left over here. That one almost looks like it's on a boat trailer. Right there. I'd go over at a different angle, but it looked like it was a boat the first time we went over it. Right where the bubbles are at. So right there, see the boat. Of the people that I find underwater, in my opinion, I feel as though 50% of them could have escaped if they would have had a window breaker. Head over to adventureswithpurpose.com and pick yourself up some window breakers. And the last thing I wanna say is just a big thank you. For those of you who purchase these, it helps us get out there on the road to help pay for food, for fuel, for new gear, as we travel the US, helping families and law enforcement for free, as we search for missing persons underwater to give these families answers and to hopefully bring home their lost loved ones. So again, the link is in the description or jump over to adventureswithpurpose.com and pick yourself up a window breaker or two today. Yep, that's it, just the one boat. Nothing else in here. Now, while we're seeing a lot of beautiful scenery, just like this pelican here, unfortunately, it's not what we came for. We came to find Pearl, and we've not yet found her. We worked the three most probable locations for where she could have been. We don't know what her mindset was. We don't know if something happened to her. So this is where we are now reaching out to you, the viewer audience. If by chance you happen to have been a friend or a family member and you know something, reach out to us with, you just might have that little clue as to, yeah, she liked to go to this one special spot. She always went and, you know, she did picnics up there. She loved to fish. Let us know what that is. You can send us an email, support at adventureswithpurpose.com anything that you have to help us out we appreciate it until then if you have not done so already please make sure to subscribe and turn on the bell notifications so that way you get a notice next time we upload our next video right now we're going to be packing up and heading over to bay st louis for our next case in hopes of bringing home a father and an uncle we'll see you on the next one